Todd. Hi, this is Michael Q. Todd. I'm really excited to be um, getting our first uh, Tools Chat Web Tools TV show going today. Now, I um, have been involved in Tools Chat for um, going on four and a half years now, believe it or not. Um, it, uh, it used to be a very popular um, Twitter chat, and it's uh, it's lapsed a little bit through uh, through lack of energy. These things take a lot to run. But we're getting it up and, uh, and going again, and we are going to um, combine it with a Web Tools TV show. So um, we're not sure if, uh, if this may um, tag along at the end of Tools Chat once we get the Twitter chat up and going. But uh, at about this time, um, every Wednesday night at uh, Eastern Time and in the evening in, uh, in California, we will be um, here. Um, with the tools chat uh, and web tools TV hashtags, and we will um, be uh, coming to you with information about tools and interviews with founders, and you can interact with us uh, on Twitter uh, or actually uh, come in uh, on the Hangout and, and be part of the panel discussion with us. So um, today we've got um, Irvin Ackerman, and uh, we've got our um, wonderful um, T web tools TV. Um, Hostess Deborah Anderson. Um, hi guys. Hey, and uh, it's really really exciting to, to have you here. And uh, I, uh, I hope we can have a quick discussion. We've been running a, um, a poll in the Tools Chat um, Facebook group and in some other Facebook groups that I managed to share the poll into. And we've had a really amazing um, response to the poll. So we've had about um, 40 or 50 people have come in and. Um, said what either their favorite tool is or their favorite five tool, tools are. Um, so we've come up with a top five. And I'm going to be really interested uh, when I show um, my screen um, just what you guys see when you see these tools and, and, uh, and what they look like to you and, uh, and how maybe you're, um, you're using them yourself. So um, just, um, you, you two might quickly want to um, introduce yourself and, uh, and, and say uh, and what you do every day that, so people get to know who you are. Please, uh, or you can start. <laughs> Sorry, Michael, didn't mean to cut you off on that. No, that's good. Hello, Urban Ackerman. I work with Web Tools Wiki. Well, you've been really uh, great, Urban. I know uh, a lot of this stuff is a, a big learning curve for you. How many Google Hangouts have you done before, for example? <laughs> you're doing really well. Um, my first two this week, actually. That's Web good. Tools TV. It's fantastic. It's really, uh, really impressed with how you're embracing all this new uh, new stuff, and uh, I know that um, uh, a lot of um, realtors uh, in America are picking up uh, all this new technology. But uh, I really hope uh, in the in the year to come, uh, you're going to become a real leader of it um, with what you're learning. So because it's all going to pay off well for you. And uh, and you're in California, Deborah. So it's seven o'clock there for you at the moment. Yes, it is. And uh, it's dinner time, right? Yep, it's dinner. Although I tend to like eat dinner after these, so I have a nice late dinner. But um, yeah, let's see. Who am I? I wear several different hats, and um, I just started the Hangout Queen thing to teach people how to do these hangouts. Back in 2013, I took a stint at Internet, at Internet Marketing. Whoops, there's a little. There we go. Am I giving up or I'm just trying to? There we go. Sorry, Vanessa, just a moment there. But um, yeah, anyway, so I was teaching people how to do Hangouts, took a stint over at Internet Marketing Ninjas, um, kind of pulled back from the online and did things behind the scene, and now I'm back. So I'm really thrilled to join um, the, <laughs> I was going to say it backwards, but the Web Tools Wiki team and the Web Tools TV and what we're going to be doing in the next months and years. I'm really loving that uh, lower third you've made. I need to get one of those tools. Thank you. <laughs> That's fun. Hi, Vanessa. I'm so pleased you've joined us. I just muted you now. We were getting a lot of background into, um, noise from you, but I'll, uh, I'll try you again so you can introduce yourself and, uh, and say what you do. You can speak now. Are you still there, Vanessa? We can hear you. No? OK. All right. So. Um, we're quickly going to um, have a look at our poll and see who our top five tools are. So uh, we we got um, 34 tools were mentioned altogether, 
and uh, I'm just going to um, go over and, uh, and share my screen and, and show you these tools now that I've done. All right, so um, hopefully you're getting a uh, screen share from me now. Everyone can see that okay? So um, we've got um, we've got these 35 tools and we've had some interesting results actually in, uh, in Hootsuite, there's Irv up there and uh, Ho Hootsuite's um, been very popular, that wasn't unexpected, Hootsuite and Buffer and uh, it's been very interesting to me um, actually to um, just to see what people are like in the way of, of tools, what they've put up as their favourites and what they see as what a tool is and, and what it's not. So um, just um, going right down the, the bottom here, we've um, yeah we had a lot of uh, a lot of candidates and it's, it's been really really interesting. And uh, over the, over the year we'll be featuring all these tools because they've all got um, you know, great uh, usability for all of us. And, and you can see here how many votes they've all got. So um, hey, Michael. Yep. Can I ask you a question? Sure. So when you look at that, you mentioned that um, it's interesting to see what's considered a tool. What would be an example of maybe something on the list that um, some people would not think of when they think of tool? Um, I imagine um, something like Triber, which is um, probably people see more of as a community than a tool, mm -hmm. perhaps. Um, or, uh, Even Skype, which people sort of kind of take for granted, and that everybody uses, so it's nothing special. That um, but actually, Skype's got a lot of features that uh, people aren't using, so there's uh, a lot of things that people can learn from that, I think. And um, I would also say Scoopit as well. That people may not see as as full so much, and Sue. That uh, these are things that are more social networks for people than than tools. It's been interesting that people that have um, featured them and, and voted on them. So it's interesting the definition of a tool. What what would be the Web Tools Wiki definition of tool? Something that's useful on the internet. I think this um, this, is, this is something that's useful for us. So um, yeah, it, can, it can be anything really. It's a um, pretty wide definition. Yeah. Um, so um, thank you so much to everyone who voted, and um, we're just going to have a quick look at. Uh, how these things work. Um, Irv, do you use Hootsuite at all? I'm sorry, you're asking Irv? Yeah, Irv, Irv do, you, do you use Hootsuite at all? Yes, I've used it in the past, not currently. Oh, so you have got a little bit of an uh, idea of how to use it? Yes. I'm just um, unmuting. Oh, Vanessa, you may have muted yourself, have you? I was just going to unmute you so you can speak if you want to. Oh, yes, I use Hootsuite. Oh, great, Vanessa. Thank you. Please tell us what you do, Vanessa, you, and um, just introduce yourself because you were muted before. Please talk about it. Uh, yes, I use it every day. And um, you can see here. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick look at, uh, for people who don't know who's sweet and uh, maybe don't um, use it so much, um, just how I'm using it. Um, you can uh, see here that I've got quite a few um, streams that I can um, go across to the right here. And if you want to add a stream, you can just put in something here like tonight. I can um, add a stream, um, for example, I can um, add a uh, hashtag um, search in here. And, in the stream, and, and I can um, follow who's, uh, who's talking on Hootsuite. So thank you very much, Chat Salad, for giving us a shout out there. And uh, and you can uh, I can see um, who's mentioning um, Tools Chat in here. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, and uh, so Hootsuite's a, a multifunctional um, dashboard. Really, it, uh, it really can do so many things. You can add uh, a multitude of social networks. You can see all the all the options here. You can even put Foursquare into it, uh, LinkedIn, and, and Google Plus. So it's not just about Twitter, um, although I am mainly using it um, for Twitter. And uh, you can um, you can publish things in here, and uh, you can uh, see analytics of, of what's happening um, with your 
tweets and you can create reports if you've got um, customers that you're doing social media for example you can make um, reports um, see what uh, is happening with the results of um, their posts um, there's a whole lot of things to learn um, so please just go to the webtoolswiki.com forward slash hootsuite and, uh, and uh, you can get a full understanding of how it works so, and Michael, sure. there's um, quite a few options for the, the free version of Hootsuite. I have the pro version of Hootsuite, but I think that Hootsuite's pretty full even for the free version. Absolutely. Do you have the pro? Yeah, I've got, I got, um, I got super pro, I think. <laughs> I've, got the, I've got the biggest one you can get. I I, I've always had it, so I don't know what it's like. I'm kind of spoiled, so I don't know what it's like. Uh, with, uh, with these things, uh, uh, the kind of way I'm with, with these tools is that I've just got the uh, I've got the pro version of all of them. I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you're interested in, uh, in in how to use the Twitter chat, um, this is a great tool um, for using the Twitter chat that I'm using to track the, uh, the tweets um, about who's. Um, thanks a lot for the tweet, Irv. So I can give you a favorite in here. You see, I'm logged into the thing called Tweet Chat. And um, so you just go to tweetchat.com and uh, put in the hashtag toolschat so you can uh, you can follow our tweets on uh, on here. So uh, thank you very much for everyone who's doing that. And uh, so next in our poll was a, a tool called Buffer. So if, for example, you're on um, any website um, anywhere, so I'm just going to show you um, how I'm using Buffer. Have you got, are you guys using Buffer at all? <laughs> yep. Buffer's uh, something that started um, uh, about four and four and a half years ago, and this is uh, why we actually started Tools Chat. Was uh, with, I co-founded it with the uh, one of the founders of Buffer, Leo Woodrich, and uh, we did it to um, basically to get people into Twitter more and uh, and to discuss uh, different tools and. Uh, and so Leo and I were um, active doing that at the start. So um, if you um, if you if I go to uh, one of my um, tweets here, for example, and um, I've got it, um, say um, say I go to this tweet here, and uh, is, uh, this is a tweet I've got pinned at the moment. Did you know? You, you can pin it. <laughs> so uh, if I want to send this out, um, I've got a thing called um, Buffer Awesome, and um, if I, I've got Buffer is uh, added in. I, I use a Chrome extension up the top of my um, computer up here. You can see this extension, this Buffer signal. So I can. I've got all these people's accounts and, and, and my different Twitter accounts and some Facebook accounts and, and LinkedIn all. Um, in here, so actually, just with one quick blast of a, um, a, a post, I can add. I'm not going to do that to all these accounts, but if I wanted to, I could. So you can pick out here, and you can change to a quote, um, and uh, and take my name out of it, and uh, and you can just say, um, put this out. So I can put this out of. Uh, I can put it into Facebook, and I can put it into LinkedIn, and um, I can take out the ones that I don't want to use it for. And all right, so I can um, add that. Uh, see, I'm adding it to a queue, and you've also got an option of um, scheduling the post or um, sharing it now or bumping it up the queue right to that so it's the next one to go out um, that's scheduled. And um, so I'm going to add that to a queue. And when you actually go, I'm going to show you how to um, what happens when I actually go into Buffer. Hey Michael, while you're doing that, I do have an, another question for you. Yeah. So does it stagger? You know how um, Hootsuite didn't used to, and then they they had the ability where you schedule it for two accounts, and it, and it won't go out at the same time on the two accounts. Does Buffer have the same thing? Um, with Buffer, you um, you set the time that it's going to go out. So right. Um, um, you can um, if you if you put share now, it all goes out at the same time. Right. But and um, one thing Buffer's got that um, Hootsuite does not have is the, um, this ability to preset your times. So um, I've got all these times preset. You see, if, like, if you have a look at my LinkedIn account, I've, I've, it's got the. Um, if you go to here, it's got the schedule. 
of you can set the times that you're going to post out of LinkedIn. You see? Yep. See, I, I've got 15 posts coming out into LinkedIn every day. I think LinkedIn allow you to do 24. So um, they let you post every hour. So um, why wouldn't you? you take advantage of that? Because um, in LinkedIn, things are pretty much there or gone. You know, they're not going to sit here and stick around like another private site. So, it's quite so the good. advantage is you can identify when your users are the most active. Figure yeah. out that schedule for each of your networks and set that up in yeah, buffer. You just go for a posting time, and uh, and you can uh, have more and more times uh, in there for, for each of the accounts. So, very good, really, isn't it? So um, you can um, take that one out because we don't need that one. But uh, let's kind of see how it works there. And you can also add um, teams to your account. So if you go into the settings, you can add team members into that account. I don't have a team member there, but if I wanted to, um, someone um, from my team post out of there, I just invite a team member and, and add, add it into there and do that. Um, this, um, this option is, uh, um, I think it's $30 a month or $40 a month or something like this. Uh, um, this is a pretty high grade down buffer option, but they've got a free option as well. I think you can send out um, six tweets, up, up to six tweets at a time in your, uh, in your schedule, and then a uh, $10 option where you can have two or three accounts attached to it. This option you can have 25 accounts. So I've actually got two of these accounts. I've got another one running in Firefox as well. So I've got one of these in there. So I've actually got um, 50 accounts in, in Buffer if I keep um, having 10 posts coming out of <laughs> them. That explains why Michael Q. Todd is everywhere. <laughs> it's the yeah. Buffer app. <laughs> well, it, it's, it, starts, it starts to, but um, now I'm going to show you something that's. Um, that uh, came number three on our list, um, which is uh, much more exciting um, for um, being able to um, do this kind of thing. So I've got buffer going on, but um, this is uh, is not not quite as exciting as this one. And this is a thing called um, SMQ. And um, in SMQ, you can put um, up to 15 accounts in, in here, and uh, and soon there's going to be a very new SMQ where um, people are going to be able to do a whole lot more. And in this uh, one, you can um, see the mentions um, of of um, into your account, and uh, you can also um, set um, like buffer. You can set for a single queue, and um, you can um, so for the single queue, if you just want to post. Uh, one at a time, um, you can uh, do that, and you can set times down here for the, the times that you want to post out. But um, where SMQ gets really interesting is that you can um, make a recurring queue. So these, um, you can fill these um, this queue up here, and these tweets are timeless tweets. Um, you can see that most of these tweets are about the Woodfield Wiki posts, um, like leading to people into um, tweets, leading people into posts about the Woodfield Wiki. And these these can recur um, once they once they've all gone out they'll um, they'll start coming out again. Um, and when you post um, each of them, if you want to um, only do them once, you can set an expiry date, or if you only want them to come out twice, or if they're time sensitive and they're only for an event, for example, you're marketing over the next month, you don't want them coming out in March if the event's in February, you can set an expiry date. You can add photos to it in here. Um, but as I say, the new SMQ, um, which is coming out on the 1st of February, is going to have uh, a huge range of um, features that are not available now. I'm not actually, I, I do have access to the development of it, but um, I'm in the beta testing for it, but I'm not actually, I don't know if I'm about to show that or not, so um, I'll, uh, I won't do that. It's also got great analytics, and uh, you can add LinkedIn into here, and uh, Facebook pages as well, so uh, it's... Uh, it's a very exciting tool for all of us as well that are using it. So um, the uh, the next one, um, you guys can uh, you guys are going to know a, a lot more about it, and uh, I know that this is a real power user of it is uh, Skype. So um, <laughs> maybe uh, you might be able to um, talk to us a little bit about how you're using Skype. Um, maybe all of you, I don't use Skype so much anymore, but um, you might be able to. Um, I use it all day. I have um, I have the chat version, so that's up. I'm usually invisible, otherwise I would be on there. I'm literally 24/7, but um, constantly chatting. I have different chat groups, so we have like 
Gail Gardner started a blogger um, collaboration group of like almost 200 people, so that's yeah, a so chat this that's 24-7. This, this is where I met you in this kind of group. Yeah. yeah, probably, yeah. I'm not in that group as much, but I think, yeah, um, in the blogger collaboration. Um, use it I, for this team. This is where I met Vanessa as well. So. <laughs> yes, Vanessa's in there. Irv, are you in that blogger collaboration? So this is a whole... Uh, whole way of using um, Skype that um, people would not have thought of possibly before is to, uh, is to connect people and, and having a mass conversation group going. So um, this, is, um, this is a great thing. And, uh, and that, that's very true that it seems like people always think of Skype as a video conversation. So I've had to like say, hey, can I audio Skype? You know, it's kind of call you just like the phone and it's not video so then people aren't freaked out about you know, having seen in their curlers or, or whatever. Um, but also the IM, and I think that's one, the people that don't use it don't realize that it's it's um, it's a messaging tool as well. So a lot of times when I talk to people about Skype, I differentiate, is it an audio call, video call, or an IM? Sure. And uh, you're, you're, um, you are unmuted, I think, Vanessa, so uh, you, you, can, um, you can tell us how you're using Skype if you wish. Okay, I'm trying not to cough on you. That's right. um, yeah, like Deb, um, Skype is one that I use a lot, but I stay invisible in that blogger mastermind group because, as she said, there are 200 folk in there, and at any time there may be a hot and heavy discussion, and other times it's quite quiet. Um, the other thing that I use Skype for is with clients. I remember one of the clients that I met um, on Google Plus, uh, we took the conversation to Skype and actually walked her through some activities that she wanted some consulting on. And so it's great for that. And as well, um, I use it for family. Um, one of the things that uh, made me really happy was I wasn't able to get to Atlanta for my uh, only granddaughter's birthday and so we had a Skype conversation um, actually a, a Skype video conference um, and so I was able to participate in her birthday party so that was a really neat use of the tool. That's great so um, you guys what, what what's your etiquette on Skype? I, I always wonder what to do. I, I usually have mine on orange which um, usually um, it sort of prevents people from um, feeling that they can just press the button and call me a phone call, which I think some people do when you're green. Is that is that how you guys do it? You just keep yourself on orange all the time? Or what do you do? I keep myself on invisible, like Vanessa said. Um, that way I can see what comes in. Now the only thing is, um, advanced Skype users will know that you're online because if you send a message, if you're not online or if you're like, do not disturb, it'll show pending. But if it doesn't show pending, then you know the person's on invisible and actually there. That's like just a little test. But usually those people that are that advanced also can respect the the aspect of the invisible. But so on, yeah, on, I'm, Skype, on Skype I can't even see you now. On um, you know what I'm. If you're invisible, I might I not. That means that I can't <laughs> even see you. Um, I don't know how it works and that you I'm assuming you're using Windows version. I have a Mac version so I can see everybody on the left hand side and I can see what status. I'm not sure what the Windows view is. Right. And I'm using Oops, sorry about that. I'm actually using a Linux version and so it shows differently as well. But what I think is invisible Maybe it depends on if the people are in your contact list. I think that's what it is. And if mm -hmm. they're in your contact list, I think what happens is they see the Skype button or the Skype cloud, but they only see an outline. And it shows you as invisible or shows you as um, not available. So the different versions show things somewhat differently. And if I'm not mistaken, Linux is well behind the Windows version. Okay, that makes sense. How, how I put you, people into lists. That's how I can find people. <laughs> how, are, how are you using Skype? Or you I, I use Skype um, mainly for the chat um, and the connectivity. Um, it's, it's a way that I can uh, find out who's online right away and, and know um, 
who I can reach out to and I like the feature how you can leave a message and when they sign on uh, your message will get to them so you can keep the dialogue going uh, mm -hmm. um, across time zones really very good I, um, I got a, a lot more benefit out of Skype um, I worked out that in the contacts area, contacts area I could go because um, now um, Skype is owned by Microsoft uh, who uh, do all the technology for Facebook as well, so um, they're, they're kind of connected now. And uh, I realise now that you, if you go into your contacts section, a little tip for anyone, is, um, you can find all your Facebook um, contacts there, um, who, their Skype accounts, and actually you can add all of them in one click to your Skype contacts, which is uh, which is a very useful and powerful thing for uh, for me to do. And uh, I love it how it shows people's birthdays up, but, so you can. Um, you could be sending a birthday message there, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's just a, a fantastic thing um, with Skype, and uh, everyone's got a basic knowledge of it, but obviously a few of the things that we've talked about now are indications that it is a multifaceted tool, and there are a lot of different things that you can do. Like for example, I, I've got I pay twelve dollars a month to be able to um, make free calls to um, telephones in the United States. So un unlimited for a month, which is um, is a very useful feature because I, I, I'm constantly calling the United States and uh, I, um, I didn't um, I didn't uh, use that properly before. I was um, just calling with the um, with paying the Skype for money for five cents a minute or something, but it's twelve dollars unlimited for a month, which a lot of people don't know exist. Um, it, it's uh, it's a Pretty much a no-brainer for me to, to keep in contact with people and, uh, and use it as well. And uh, it's uh, when you when you get into these uh, these um, groups and chats, uh, if you're in a few of those, it really is a it's extremely powerful networking um, tool. Yeah, obviously it's three. Vanessa's saying it's three dollars uh, in the United States, um, or unlimited. So it's, it's incredible. But from overseas, it's still twelve dollars a month. It's um, still very very good. It's so good. It's great for um, regular meetings too. As far as like, I'm two different companies have meetings, and you can take your minutes right in. Like, as someone says something you want to remember, you just put it into the chat, and then someone can take that copy paste, and now you've got built-in minutes. And uh, what is the um, you know what, what is the, uh, the thinking of you guys about? Um, you know, is Skype kind of your glue of the internet? Is that is that your kind of glue of where, where you base your all your your communicating with people around? Is that is that the place that you use to do that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I um I've, I've been off Skype for for a year or so because of, um on the Windows 8 I couldn't make it work, so I, I've only been really using it on my phone, and I think I might have been missing out a bit. Um, not having it uh, turned on the computer so um, so much so and on my iPad it just bounces out whenever I try to use it I can't um, I can't click on anything and it just kills the um, the use of it so I've had a few problems with Skype but um, I, I really think that it is a, it's a glue for a lot of people um, especially my mother <laughs> so, so <laughs> like, so, um, she's not a Facebook, Facebook person so as you've said uh, if I want to find out if she's online or not I can uh, yeah, it, it probably is uh, somewhere that's important to, um, yeah, to have a uh, con constant eye on I think, to uh, communicate. That makes sense. So um, the last tool that we're going to feature today is uh, a thing called Canva, which was um, kind of, um, on most people's list as the most popular new tool of um, 2014, the most useful thing to come out of 2014 um, because... Um, it used to be uh, quite a high level of skill and to uh, create a beautiful image online um, with um, uh, with a photo and uh, and some writing on it, um, for example. And uh, Canva seemed, and there were a few other tools that made that um, available to people, that kind of um, functionality, but they weren't... Um, as a higher level as Canva has, uh, has taken things to. So just have a quick look at um, our, um, our web tools wiki um, 
end the page, and uh, we, we'll be able to see at the same time how the Webfield Wiki, um, a Webfield Wiki page works, and we'll just show you um, a couple of things about Canva in this um, in this page. Do you guys use Canva at all? Absolutely. <laughs> we might be able to tell you tell you more about it um, than me. So you're using it quite a lot, Deva, or? I do, and I'm actually, I was um, an advanced Photoshop trainer at one point, so for me to um, switch to use Canva online was really a big, like, pulling teeth, at, but then I started to use it, and it's great. It's available wherever you're at. I know people are using Photoshop in the cloud, but Photoshop is pretty complicated, and Canva is pretty easy, so, um, what, yeah, what definitely. The, what is the differences between the Photoshop and the Canva? Um, Photoshop used to be like a desktop version, now they have it in the cloud. I'm still using um, desktop version, I was able to get an update, but Photoshop um, level of complexity, there's a lot of people that won't even, won't even open the app just because it's, it's very difficult to use, right. whereas Canva um, does a lot of things for you with the grids and everything, so it's a lot easier. Photoshop used to be the standard that all um, photo or image applications were judged by Photoshop. So um, you can see, um, I'm just scrolling slowly down here, um, we've got a great page about Canva, it's, um, it's been very popular as well, and uh, you can see we've had 654 um, shares and things, and uh, lots of um, reactions to this page, and uh, thank you all for that, and uh, it's, uh, I can't quite get this to scroll down, but um, Canva is, um, you can see the slow down. These are the kind of designs that people are making on Canva. is um, is really really beautiful, isn't it? To be able to make uh, something like this, especially uh, when uh, sites like Pinterest and Instagram have become so popular. And uh, you can see on Facebook um, the the most commonly shared thing, um, possibly behind videos, is uh, is still the um, the way that people are combining images with uh, with photos uh, and uh, images with uh, some writing on them, and uh, people are getting better and better at them, and I'm sure a lot of them are being made by Canva. So um, mm -hmm. how, Canva, how Canva works is, um, I think how they monetize the thing is they're, uh, they're going into these different um, photo stock sites, and sometimes you have to pay a dollar, right, to, uh, to be able to use them. You can also upload your own. So, for example, um, I'm a member of 123RF stock photo. So, and I've seen actually some of the same images on 123RF as on Canva. But I upload the ones that I've paid for. That way, I can use them. I shouldn't be saying this in front of Canva, but <laughs> that way you can use them in different places because you paid for the licensing. Yeah. Um, but if you have several brands, recommendations to have several Canva accounts, only because you could keep adding your photos and have like 300 photos, and then it's hard to find them in Canva. That's a great tip. Um, I, I particularly like the slides here of um, how Canva works uh, in here, so uh, you can get a good idea of how it all comes together. And uh, they, they, all the basic use of it is uh, it started in the slides here that I just flipped through then. So um, please go and, uh, and have a look at our WebTools Wiki um, page about Canva. We've got some tips uh, there. And, uh, yeah, and, and if you've got any questions about it, um, just ask us there. So, uh, yeah. So, um, what, you guys, what was, what's your particular um, useful tool for for 2015? Just before we wrap up, um, what, what do you say would be the most um, useful thing that you're using when you go online every day? What, what, what what's the tool that, uh, that you particularly like using? You want to go left to right and herb start? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, not a problem. Well, I just got into Scredible. Um, seems to do everything similar to Buffer and Hootsuite. Um, however, I've been setting up um, scheduled posts, and they haven't been going out um, at their scheduled times. Actually, they haven't been going out at all. Um, obviously, I just signed up for it, but I like the features with the, the intelligent bots that <clears throat> I give marching orders and they go out and they find um, the content that I'm looking for. And um, as I use the site and um, upload more about what I do, um, the bots also learn my behaviors and what I'm looking for and they bring back um, even better content over time. 
So um, I'm looking to learn that a little more and, and uh, utilize it to um, increase my content and increase my reach. Yeah, fantastic. I love, I love Spreadable. Um, there's also, um, when, when you get into it more, there's, uh, there's a great feature in Spreadable where you can take the, um, the blog posts or newspaper articles that uh, with, with keywords that uh, you're interested in, and uh, Spreadable will um, collate all that and, and actually make a, an article for you, put an article out uh, for you um, that you can then edit and, uh, and put out as your own blog post um, or email or newsletter or something like that. So this is another thing that Spreadable will do for you. And it's, um, it, was, um, it was made by a very good friend of mine, Thomas Power. So uh, we'll definitely feature um, Thomas uh, in an interview on the book. You can hear about Spreadable and uh, it's great that you're using it. With, um, that's, that's Thomas... Powers company or his his platform? Yeah, yeah, he started it. Yeah. That's who introduced me to it. Well, you introduced me to him, and he introduced me to it. But he never even said that <laughs> he was, um, you know, he was part of it. Yeah, yeah, no, he, that's he, awesome. He's the founder of that. So, um, yeah, he's the guy that started e Academy, which is a, a LinkedIn alternative to in Britain. So um, he was. Um, He's a real futurist about the internet, Thomas. So um, we'll, uh, we'll keep keep, keep, keep making Spreadable better and better, I'm sure. How about you, De Deborah? What, what's a, um, a go-to place for you that you might like for people to know about? I love Communit. It's um, it is a paid app. Um, commune.it, um, but it's a Twitter relationship building tool. So it um, has its own algorithms in there um, to find out like who you should follow, who you shouldn't follow, who you should converse with, who you may have missed. So like if you're responding and you've missed something from two days ago, that'll pop up and say, and then once you respond, it disappears. It just it keeps all the communication straight. Now those of you that are out there and I haven't responded, you know it's not Communit's fault. It's mine because I need to actually log into Communit. So. <laughs> But it's a great it's a great tool. So I've got a question about that thing. So when you um, I get a lot of tweets, like people tweeting to me out of it, saying I'm one of their top um, like, uh, followers on Comp Community or uh, for the week or something like this. Um, so do you have the ability to edit those tweets, or does it just generate them for you without giving them the Um, I think you have the ability to like put it in a draft mode and edit it. I have mine just going automatic. Or you can turn them off. So, and you can also like control as far as um, the community advertising and so forth. Although I like to give community the advertising because they're really that great of a tool. But yeah, you you um, if you log in, then you can see it, and then you can edit it. The um, the guy that started that, he's also um, he used to be very active in our tools chat Facebook group. So um, I'm sorry, I've just lost the names on good places. Um, but um, yeah, he's, he's another guy that we'll definitely be able to interview. So it's, uh, it's fantastic um, to learn that you guys are into these two tools. So uh, when we do uh, when we do do a show about them, um, we'll, we'll be able to have some knowledgeable input into how they work, which uh, which I, I don't have, for example, I'm not using Scribble so much, and uh, or uh, Communit, uh, obviously, uh, shortly. So uh, I'm learning a lot today. This is great. What's Vanessa going to teach me? What's, what's your go-to place, Vanessa? Tell us a bit. Okay, well, I put it in the chat, but um, what I would say is the most useful ones, in addition to those already mentioned, um, I use Storify, and I also use Scoop It, and I'm finding better ways to use both of them. In fact, today I put together a Storify um, paper, I guess you would call it, for the first time. I've played around with it a little bit, but today I was a little bit more deliberate with it. And also, I'm into project management, and so I use Trello on a daily basis, and I also use Teamwork, uh, which used to be Teamwork PM. Um, I don't use that quite as often. I use that for larger projects because it works really well for that when Trello does not work quite as well for larger projects for me. So those are mine. All right, Deborah. I love these tools that you're talking about, uh, the Storify and the Scooper and the Trello. Um, so um, I've identified these as uh, Pillar 6, um, Q 
communities, which means that they are um, they are content content based communities, but they are um, collaborative. They are um, basically um, not only uh, you collaborating with other people on your content and theirs, but you can actually um, make uh, content that is. Um, it's it's kind of rich content, and uh, it's it's got more than one person's um, input into the content that comes out. If you get what I mean, so um, you can actually um, yeah coll collaborate in a whole new level with those uh, with Scoop it and Trello and um, and Storify. So we're very much on the same page. And again, um, not using any of those on a daily basis at the moment either myself. So um, probably need to be. And uh, so thank you for the, uh, the kick. Uh, the kick for that <laughs> is uh, I, you, you, everyone. You've got to build these things into your daily routines and, uh, and get used to them uh, as, uh, as a thing to do. And, uh, and then they just become um, a bit like brushing your teeth every day, something you use every day, and, uh, and more and more useful for you. So we've, uh, we've had some great input today. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, just. Um, let you know uh, about Web Tools TV. If uh, you want to um, host your own show, like we've just done um, for the last uh, 40 minutes or so, um, if you want to host uh, your own 30-minute um, show, um, or even an hour if you really want to, um, we've got a, uh, a calendar. Um, perhaps Deborah, you can explain to people um, exactly what they should do if, um, if they want to um, collaborate as a as a host. Uh, any time on uh, Web Tools TV. This this can either be uh, a one-off um, during one week, or you can um, actually grab your time slot. And uh, at the moment, because um, we've got a lot of time slots to fill in because we're just starting, so if you want to grab a time slot that becomes your regular weekly time slot, um, you can grab that, and you'll get a lot of um, promotion and uh, and collaboration from uh, a large number of people there in the, in the Web Tools um, Wiki community. For your show, so that, that's going to be a big plus um, for your running your show with with us. So, um, how do people actually do that, Deborah? If they want to do that, actually, the the easiest right now is just to get in touch with me, and I am Social Web Cafe. Let's see, I don't have and that little red icon thing that you see there. Wait, is it that? It's that way. <laughs> um, Social Web Cafe on Skype. Um, Deborah at socialwebcafe.com. Facebook, I'm Social Web Cafe. Just um, or even leave a message in any of the Web Tools Wiki, like Facebook, and I will get in touch and we will figure out how to get you into one of those time slots. But, but you've made up some kind of a calendar that people can add their name to. Um, it's not a calendar. It's actually it's a like a Google Sheets spreadsheet. And once the people get in touch with me, then I can give them access so they can look at the slot and see what's available. It's just tricky to, to tell people over the Hangout how to find that sheet because it's a big, long I'd, I'd quite link. Like to, I'd quite like to take um, like your, your time and put into that and, um, and just make it. Um, can we not have a public Google Calendar that people can just add their time? Yes, we can do that. We can do that. And I can, the, what I was planning on doing is having the sheet so people can look and see which slots are available. And then after that's decided, then we put it on the calendar so that people can go to the calendar and find out, oh, such and such a show's at this time. Otherwise, the calendar can get really messy. Mm. Um, but um, I think if we just run a public Google calendar and people can um, add themselves into there and uh, at least um, add themselves in there and say they want to do it, and, and then maybe once they've done that, we can reach out to them and um, make sure that they're gonna what they're going to talk about and, and they're doing it the right way. And um, it's just going to be a, a bit of a time saver. So, um, and, um, I what, think we, we can, might. Or we can have one of our administrative staff. We can appoint them to uh, to look after it rather than um, taking up your time. Uh, with this we administrative kind of. So, uh, yeah, we might have support issues if we do the calendar. Then it might be that that people are doubling up by accident, and then we've got to figure that out, and someone's got to be monitoring. So it might actually create more administrative work than if they find a slot that's actually available. But either way, if they just leave a message within the Web Tools Wiki Facebook, we can sort it all out. Yeah, we, we may even make a different Facebook group um, for the Web Tools TV. Yeah. And, um, we're really hoping this will grow everyone to, uh, to have uh, 300 people um, just using this uh, opportunity every week. To, uh, to do yep. Anything about the internet, anything, anything you want to talk about the internet, um, 
doesn't need to be about fools and if you want to run any kind of show about the internet uh, stuff, please uh, go ahead and do it. And uh, what will happen is that we will make you a manager of the Web Tools Wiki Facebook page, and uh, you'll be able to um, just run the Hangout, the Google Hangout here um, from yourself. Uh, you yourself, um, uh, and you'll get better and better doing that. And uh, if uh, you're not confident with uh, running a Hangout, um, we're, we're um, quite open to uh, showing you how to do that to get you up and running with it. Definitely. So there, there you go. Thanks so much, everyone. And uh, we will be back next week at the uh, at the same time, um, hopefully with a special guest to uh, interview about uh, something about uh, a shiny new web tool. That's why, perhaps even one of those five that uh, we mentioned today. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.